Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Uma. I'm one of the residents on orthopedic at Werribee. Uh, today, we'll be talking about Montegia and Galeazzi fractures. Uh, I'll start off by talking about Montegia. So it's defined as a proximal one-third ulnar fracture with an associated radial head dislocation. Uh, it was first described in 1814 by an Italian surgeon, Giovanni Montegia. Uh, when he first discovered it, uh, the original pattern was described as a fracture of the shaft of the ulna with anterior dislocation of the radial head. Uh, it's a rare injury in adults. It most commonly occurs in children between the ages of 4 and 10, and it accounts for about 1-2% to 2 of all forearm fractures. brush up on a little bit of the anatomy uh, around the, the sort of elbow and the radial head. So uh, there's sort of the radial head, um, there's two sort of main joints there. It's the articulation between the, the radial head and the capitone, the radio capitella joint, and then the, the proximal radio ulna joint. And, and that's relevant because uh, when we're talking about Montegia fractures, it's a fracture through the ul ulna and, uh, and the force of, of the fracture sort of disrupts something up here causing a dislocation of the radial head. Uh, so the, ra the, the radial ulna joints are a sort of uniaxial pivot joint allowing for that pronation and supination of the wrist. So basically your, your, your radius rotates around the ulna. Uh, the, probably the, mo the most important structure there for the stability of that radial ulna joint is the annular ligament, which is a sort of s almost forms a semisphere around the, uh, the radial head, keeping it inlocated there. The quadrate ligament, um, and then the sort of interosseous membrane there between um, the two bones. Uh, and then at the sort of uh, the radial capitula joint, uh, you've got the um, the lateral collateral ligament complex as well. Uh, there's one um, sort of main classification system that they use, the Bado classification, uh, which describes the, the different patterns of injury. Uh, the most common one is a type one um, uh, Bado um, um, Montegia fracture, which is that original sort of description of a of a proximal or middle third of the ulna fracture with anterior dislocation of the radial head. Type two refers to fractures of the, the proximal or middle third of the ulna with posterior dislocation of the radial head. Uh, type three um, refers to fractures of the, at the ulna at the metaphysis uh, with lateral dislocation of the radial head. And then a type four fracture, uh, a type four in, um, refers to a fracture of both the, the ulna and the radius with also a, a dislocation of the radial head in any direction. Uh, it's a common injury to be missed in ED. Uh, presents with obviously pain and swelling around the elbow joint and they may have an obvious dislocation at the, the radial capitella joint. Decreased range of motion at the elbow and instability uh, and they may have uh, um, complicating uh, pin um, sort of entrapment causing um, so any sort of sequelae of that of that nerve being entrapped sort of supplies all the all the extensors in, in, in the forearm so you may have deficits for those uh, diagnosis um, AP and lateral views of the uh, the elbow uh, wrist and forearm are important and uh, I'll show, there's more images on the next slide, but assessing the, the radial uh, head end location by sort of drawing a radio capitella line can be helpful. Uh, another thing to note is that uh, the fracture may not always be obvious. In pediatric populations, it can simply present as a plastic deformity of the ulna without an obvious break in the cortex. And then you'd have that uh, associated um, dislocation of the radial head. CT can be helpful when sort of considering other associated injuries in the elbow, such as fractures involving the coronoid, uh, olecranon, and radial head. Uh, so this is what I was referring to in, in the last slide. So you can draw a line through the capitone, through the, the head of the radius, just looking for that sort of alignment of the radial head on the capitellum. And that's on the lateral view, and then also on the, on the frontal view there. What I was referring to with the, the plastic deformity is um, normally there's a nice straight border 
of the ulna on the uh, on the lateral view. Uh, sometimes you can have bowing of that of that shaft, which is something that you have to can look for. So I've, I've put some examples there. You can see that the uh, the uh, the radial head's dislocated anteriorly there, and then you've got the sh the, the sort of mid shaft fracture, and then similarly here you've got dislocation anteriorly because it's no longer in line. And then you've got a plastic deformity of the uh, the ulna, the Montegio type one fracture. Uh, management for these uh, these fractures. Um, adults, generally speaking, need to have operative management. Uh, Non-operative management is just sort of used in the pediatric population if you're able to get uh, anatomic alignment of the fracture and uh, you have a stable stable already capitella joint after. Uh, reduction of the fracture and then you'd have cast mobilization at that point above elbow. Operative uh, is management's usually required in adults uh, in commutated injuries and unstable injuries and usually that requires uh, an RF of the ulna shaft um, plus minus uh, reduction of the radial head um, after that if it's still um, not in located. Uh, it's important to manage these conditions because if left untreated, you can have, as I mentioned, uh, posterior interosseous nerve entrapment around the radial head, uh, resulting in neuropathy, or you can have malunion with the radial head uh, being dislocated as well. Um, for Galeazzi fractures, it's described as a distal uh, one-third radial shaft fracture with an associated uh, distal radial ulnar joint injury. Named after Professor Galeazzi, who's another Italian surgeon, described this pattern of injury in 1934, but it was actually described much earlier by uh, another legendary surgeon, Sir, Sir Cooper, who's also known for describing the Cooper's ligament in the breast and uh, Cooper's fascia in the testes. Uh, it's most common injury in, in younger children as well, uh, with a peak incidence between 9 to 13 years of age. Accounts for about 3% of forearm fractures in the pediatric population and about 7% of forearm fractures in uh, the adult population. Uh, we've brushed on the, on the distal radial ulnar joint in previous uh, lectures by Dr. Clare, um, but it's essentially a, it's a, it's a pivot joint. Um, again, it's just at the, at the distal end uh, responsible for the pronation and supination of the forearm, uh, and it's an articulation between uh, the sigmoid notch and the ulnar head. Uh, important stabilizers of this uh, this joint include the the volar and dorsal radial ulnar ligaments and the TFCC um, complex. I won't go too much into the anatomy there, but um, well, the way we think about it is is generally two sort of types. It's the Walsh classification, and it refers to the direction of displacement of the radius. Um, so type 1 being a dorsal sort of displacement of the radius and then type 2 being volar displacement. Uh, generally occurs, um, as you can see, due to supination or pronation forces fall, falling on outstretched hands or you know, that sort of thing. Uh, presentation, uh, wrist and forearm pain. Uh, you may have a radial deformity for the uh, that you can feel. Uh, limitation of wrist motion and you may have a prominent uh, ulnar head or deformity. Imaging again, uh, AP and lateral views of the forearm, elbow and wrist. Uh, on the AP you're looking for widening of the um, um, on, sorry, on the styloid, the widening of the joint, um, the distal radial ulnar joint. And uh, on the lateral view, looking for that uh, displacement, uh, either dorsal or volar, type 1 or type 2. Uh, you can also see some radial shortening. Um, it's significant if it's greater than 5 millimeters. Management for this, uh, again, in adults, you know, it's generally speaking operative. Uh, in children, we, can tr we try and do it non-operative. Uh, requires you to obviously have an anatomic reduction of the fracture and the distal radial ulnar joint with the subsequent cast immobilization. Uh, the reduction sometimes can be difficult. Um, 
you often the extensor carpial naris blocks um, uh, the reduction or periosteum and so sometimes you may need a, an open reduction um, uh, to, to sort of achieve that. Uh, in adults, um, I can put an example of pinning. So you, you, you've got to fix the, the fracture with, a, with an orif and then sometimes they, they sort of put a pin across the distal radial and the joint. Uh, otherwise, they can also do soft tissue reconstruction um, uh, and, and sort of in more sort of chronic instability or malunion of fractures, a corrective osteo osteotomies may be required as well. Uh, and that's my uh, presentation on uh, Montegio and Galliazzi fractures, which is very similar.